Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Samantha Osnowitz, and I'm a Customer Success Manager here at Redbooth. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at how Bluefish Design Studio is using Redbooth to manage an amazing number of complex client projects from start to finish. At the end of the presentation, we'll, uh, we will allow time for question and answers. Please be, feel free to be sending them throughout. Your speaker today, Marcus Neto, is the owner and creative director at Bluefish Design Studio. He started his career in design and has worked as a front-end developer, certified scrum master, product owner in Agile, and also the former product evangelist for Expression Engine. So without further ado, I would uh, like to introduce you to Marcus Neto. be kind of interesting to know uh, who's out there. So um, anyway, can you go to the next uh, next slide? All right, so prior to Red Booth, um, we were using a product called Active Collab. Now, we've been on Red Booth since uh, it was actually, what was it, uh, Team, Team Box? Samantha, what was it before Red Booth? Team Box. Yeah, before um, Red Booth, it was Team Box. Yeah, so we've been using uh, Red Booth for quite a long time. Um, but prior to that, we were using Active Collab, which is a self-hosted project management application. Um, any of those of you who have used it um, know that it's it's got some nice things to it, but at the same time, it was kind of clunky. Um, my biggest thing was as I was building up my team, um, and when Samantha introduced me, she introduced me as the product evangelist for Expression Engine. I'm actually the former project uh, product evangelist for Expression Engine. Um, but so when I left Ellis Lab, I knew that I was going to build my agency back up again, and I wanted a way that I could actually see what was tasked to each um, member of the team. That was basically the most important thing to me. I, I wanted to see what tasks someone had scheduled for what day so that I could manage um, that a little bit better and make sure that I wasn't overloading people, but also that I was keeping them busy. Um, so. You know, Active Collab didn't really have an easy way of doing that. I'm sure if I had spent, you know, a day or two in the reporting module that I could have probably built something out, but it seemed kind of ridiculous that um, I couldn't do that straight out of the box. Um, it was also, no doubt, it was ugly uh, and clunky, and as a design studio, that's kind of important to us, and we found that clients just wouldn't use it. And then the other thing, too, is there weren't really any outside integrations um, to systems like Drive or Dropbox, um, and at the time there wasn't an app for iOS, which we're all, well except for one holdout, we're all on the uh, Apple uh, platform. So um, go ahead and go to the next slide. All right, so we, uh, we've kind of got our workflow down in, uh, in Red Booth. We're, we're just, you know, it, it basically allows us to do um, what we do and maintain sanity because at any point in time, as you can see from the screenshot here, that's really only half of the projects that we manage. Um, we can have you know anywhere from 30 to 40 uh, you know projects or workspaces as they're called now, um, you know accessible in uh, Red Booth, and on a, on occasion it can spike you know up from there and you know depending on maintenance uh, type stuff that we have going on with um, outside. Uh, with well, previous clients, not outside of clients. Um, so, some of the things that I, you know, that I alluded to that were um, kind of detractors from Active Collab are actually things that Red Booth excels at. So, the tasks uh, by user. If you go into reports, and I'll show all this here in just a minute in the uh, question and answer period, and I'm going to do a little bit of a demo as well. Um, the task by user is extremely easy to uh, to see. Um, and, you know, so I can go in and find out what, you know, any one person has uh, assigned to them. Um, the other thing that was really nice uh, is the idea of templating of task lists. So anytime we kick off a project, we have, you know, 
certain tasks that we know that we're going to have to do. So if you're a design studio, you know that um, you're going to have to create uh, a new uh, instance of, you know, in whatever version control system that you're using. You know they're going to have to create space on the dev server. You know that you're going to have to um, deploy to, you know, the dev server and set up your local, you know, machine and do all that other stuff. Um, you know that if you're doing the design for the project that you're going to have to do, you know, question and answers with the client and, you know, whether you're using Typeform or whatever you're using, um, you know, you have to, you know, you have to be able to, to set all that up. And we didn't want anything um, slipping through the cracks. So we actually did, um, we spent, you know, considerable time and we're still, as, as anybody, you know, when we make tweaks to our workflow, we're still working on those task lists. Um, or the templates for the task list, um, and I think you know ba basically the the gist of what I'm being told by Red Booth is that they're going to release these templates that we've created um, so that other people can use them, um, and then you can customize them to your best uh, you know, needs. Um, the other thing that I really liked was the this idea of recurring tasks. So I have things that um, that I always have to do. So. If you look real close at the image here on the slide, you'll see that at the very bottom it's pay capital one, which is funny. I didn't realize that that was that that was on there. But you know everything from paying you know credit card bills for the business um, to checking profit loss statements on a weekly basis to um, checking in with clients to you know whatever you know we set all those up as recurring tasks in Red Boot, and um, that way things don't get uh, don't get lost. And then you know we obviously as most people would, we set up uh, workspaces um, per project. And sometimes that means that we have multiple workspaces per client. So for instance, we do a lot of work with a, a local um, group called the Dolphin I Island Sea Lab. Um, and they are a basically a quasi-educational um, institute um, down on the Gulf Coast of uh, Alabama. And uh, so we have a main project with them, but then we also have a um, project with one of their their groups within the uh, organization that deals specifically with manatees. And so we, um, you know, we have uh, separate projects for each of those so that we don't um, lose track of the requirements and we can keep everything straight. So, all right, so this is, um, this is our actual, uh, you know, Red Booth environment, but this is the uh, templates uh, that they put together based on uh, the, the templates that we created. So you'll see first off that we have the ability to, you know, like we have everything broken out. So like we have design, we have front end, so everything HTML, CSS, JavaScript. We have um, our CMS of choice is expression engine, um, but you can basically customize this to whatever CMS that you're using, whether it's WordPress or Drupal or Joomla or some other self-created uh, 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 CMS. Then we also deal a lot with um, anytime you build a site, uh, even if you're not doing like true content strategy for the client, um, you know there are um, there are things that you're going to need to do. This probably would be better titled just content instead of content strategy, and we may want to make that change. But um, so when you are, you know, bringing a new client online, you're going to have to do an inventory of their, all their current client and make sure that they understand which pieces are going to have to be rewritten by them, and so on and so forth. We also dabble uh, quite a bit in SEO. Uh, we've got a couple of clients that we manage uh, all their SEO and all their social media maintenance and stuff like that. And so we've got a number of things in here um, that pertain to that. Uh, we also uh, have you know, things that we do immediately prior to uh, project launch. Uh, and I'll, I'll go through each one of these a little bit more in detail here uh, in just a second. And then project management, just typical things that you would find, you know, questions for clients and stuff. We even have um, a task list for things that we do after launch. And this is more like an internal thing. So we want to make sure that we post uh, some assets to Dribbble. Uh, we want to make sure that we post a link on Twitter and publicize that several times. We want to write a uh, blog post. We want to add that work um, to our site. And then after every project, we always do a post-mortem on the project to find out you know, like what we did that was good, that we liked, what did we do that 
um, could be you know could be a bit better and so on and so forth. And then this last one is something that I've, my my wife is actually a realtor. Um, and this last one is something that I've kind of stolen from the um, from the uh, building uh, industry. So when you are having a home built, um, oftentimes they will say, you know, towards the end of the of the building of the home, they'll say, well, we need to put together a punch list for the house. And I'm not sure what the origins are of the term punch list, but there are a lot of similarities between um, what we do as agencies that build out websites and um, builders that build homes. And so, you know, this is kind of our final, like, you know, these are the final things that we, you know, that we do. We make sure, you know, to test the site in the various browsers just to make sure that there's no, you know, outliers there. Um, we make sure to change the Expression Engine license to, um, you know, whatever it is that uh, the, the client has either provided or if we're buying that for them, then, you know, we make sure, you know, to go ahead and do that and change the Expression Engine license because it is a commercial product. Um, and then, you know, we have some things that we want to uh, do with um, SEO um, as far as, like, um, you know, we've got a, actually, we've got a file. We can probably um, include that file in this as well. But uh, just making sure that they have access to change things like title tags and uh, basic, you know, options for, you know, adding meta descriptions that are a little bit more descriptive and stuff. And we also make sure to add all of the, um, the meta tags for, you know, the various social media um, applications that are out there so that if they paste a link into Facebook, then it pulls up the right image and it pulls up the right description and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, this is kind of our setup. Um, you know, going back up, just to kind of go into you know, a little bit more in depth, we've got, um, you know, design. We, we always do wireframes. We'll oftentimes create use cases for, um, for clients so that they know that if user X comes to the site, um, and we're trying to get them to do, you know, whatever it is that we're trying to do, we're making, making sure that we're providing them with steps on how that interaction is going to, uh, going to happen. Um, we uh, will oftentimes do a visual inventory, like if we're creating an icon set or things of that nature, we'll uh, put that together so that um, we're not doing like a full-on branding guideline, uh, which is a little bit more as far as production goes but we'll at least try to get all those assets into one place so that if we need to use them, um, we certainly can. Um, and design website, uh, sometimes we'll have, you know, I'll go in depending on the, the budget of the site and specify which actual sections need to be designed. Um, so in Redbooth, you can add subtasks. So for instance, I could say homepage, you know, blog list. I can say blog, uh, article, page, um, you know, you could have a staff section, you know, so on and so forth. And you can see that this is really easy. Like, and then when, you know, Keaton Taylor is our, uh, is our designer, he's out of Joplin, Missouri. Um, so, you know, when he goes in, he can see, okay, well, I've got to design a homepage, a blog list, blog, blog article, and a staff section. And then, you know, as he do, does those things, he can check them off. And we can actually keep all of our um, discussions as part of the thread of this task. So if there's any questions about, you know, what it needs to look like or anything along those lines, um, then we can keep those in the comments here uh, for this particular, uh, for this particular uh, task. Um, element collage, you know, we'll start to bring in some things like buttons and colors and fonts and stuff like that, which is similar to the visual inventory, but a little bit different. Um, you know, this is just a, a meeting kind of reminder to discuss the design, like what do we want it to be, how, you know, how far out there can we get, and so on and so forth. Um, so here with the front end stuff, create a Git repo for project. We use Bitbucket, um, so there are some notes in here uh, for doing that. You know, create development subdomain. Um, always make sure, making sure to validate the HTML and CSS. Um, we use a robots.txt file to disallow um, Google from scanning sites prior to uh, launch. So we've got, you know, a note in here to make sure to add that. Um, and then we also use deploy.io, and this is, um, it should be uh, dploy.io, um, and we'll make that note here and have that changed. But um, so what happens is we develop locally on our machines, we push those changes, um, to Bitbucket and then deploy can be set to automatically push those changes to 
um, our development environment. And so it makes for this really kind of nice um, workflow for front end developers. Um, you know, and, and so we've got all that kind of outlined here in the, uh, the task list. As far as Expression Engine goes, typical stuff, install it, set up 404 page, you know, set up a site map.xml, which is what uh, Google uses. You can prompt uh, Google uh, to scan the site map and it makes it really nice because it can find the content um, and, you know, it uses that site map.xml to tell when content has been updated instead of just having to scan randomly. It's a more, uh, you know, more razor-like uh, way of, of telling Google what is on the site. Um, we make sure to set up the, all the SEO-related fields and channels. And one of the nice things, this task here, is set up fields, categories, and channels. Um, Expression Engine is kind of like a blank slate, so when you open it up, you, there's nothing in it. So we have to make sure to set up the various channels uh, for content. So for instance, if I want to have a channel for uh, staff, I want to have a channel for blog entries, I want to have a, a channel for um, you know, for whatever, for the home page, I can do that and then I can create or assign the fields to those uh, channels that allow me to um, give the user very finite control of the content on their, on their website. Um, so we have to set all that up. It doesn't take that long, but we make sure that, um, you know, we make sure to track that in the task list. Um, and then document, uh, and I'm sorry, content-wise, uh, we have uh, some some documents that I think uh, Redbooth has access to, which basically um, just you know allows us to take an inventory. Um, it shows information architecture of the current site, and then we can actually make modifications to that. And you can see that here underneath the content inventory. Um, you know, we do an audit. Um, we'll actually uh, we'll actually provide that to the client, and then when uh, when we're discussing that with them, we will also talk. Uh, to them about, you know, any changes that need to be made, um, and then, you know, if there's content that needs to be, re you know, rewritten or written, period, because it doesn't exist, then um, we will either, you know, we'll have that discussion about, you know, if you want us to do that, then that's, that's fine, and we'll kind of negotiate what that uh, looks like as far as cost goes. Um, if it's something that they want to take on, then we assign, you know, tasks in here uh, for them, and we make sure that, you um, that they have deadlines as well because their uh, their creation of the content affects our timeline to a certain extent, or at least the the timeline of the site launch. Um, and so we you know we try to minimize that as much as possible. So um, SEO wise, you know we uh, we want to make sure that we if they have a Google Analytics account that we gain access to that um, and that that is um, put into the site prior to launch. Um, we also, if we're managing, you know, their, and I'm using SEO here in general terms, like if we're managing like all their online presence, um, you know, we want to make sure that we gain access to Facebook. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, put them into what used to be called Google Webmasters, but they recently changed the name and I can't remember what that is. Um, we use a product called Raven Tools for um, providing reports to all of our clients that, that we're doing this service for. And Raven Tools basically takes Google Analytics, Facebook, Twitter, and you know a bunch of other stuff, um, and pulls in a lot of information from SEO Moz and things of that nature, and then creates a report for them so that they can see you know what the trends are you know from month to month, and um, and so it's actually been uh, quite good uh, with our clients. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming because there's a lot of data, so we have to kind of um, give them the four or five, you know, metrics that they really want to pay attention to. Um, and we can schedule those reports for delivery, so once everything is set up, those things get um, get sent out automatically. Um, so, and that's that's pretty much it. Oh, project launch, I'm sorry, install Google Analytics, um, maybe, you know, we make sure to set up all the um, HD access redirects for old URLs. Um, we redirect from www to non www but regardless of which way you prefer, um, you know, you can make sure that there's a task for that. Um, the database file has a domain as a case. That's a that's an expression engine specific thing. Um, we make sure to delete all the test data um, and then test all the contact forms and, and you know stuff like that and make sure that the email address has been changed and that it's functioning properly and so on and so forth. And then 
and we remove the disallow in the robots.txt file. Um, anyway, I'm looking at the clock. I, I, real quick, you know, you do have the ability to, um, you know, store files. Um, you can assign members. So this particular uh, project, Samantha and I are the only ones that are a member of. Um, there are some other things here too. I'm not sure um, whether conversations and notes are going to um, continue because they've added um, chat, which uh, tells you basically, you know, what is happening in the project. Um, so, you know, and you can actually add participants. So if I have a client, I can just drop their email address in here. Um, it'll prompt me to, if I want to invite them as a member of the organization or an external person, um, and I just click on the invite as external, and they are brought in. They can see pretty much everything that we can see, um, you know, but they may not be able to see certain things. Like, they, they probably won't be able to see who the members are and stuff like that. Um, you can also change the layout of the, um, of the user interface here um, so that, um, you know, you can more of a, a side scroll so you can see like a running task list of all the things that are, um, you know, that are here. This is just an, a new UI that they've added. If I need to add a new task list, I can create, you know, create one. Um, and it just, you know, immediately I can start typing what the tasks are. Um, if I'm in here as part of this, I can actually, you know, click on the uh, calendar and I can assign a, a date and I can assign this to, you know, Samantha. Um, and when I do that, she actually gets notifications via email that says, you know, Marcus Neto changed the ad Fabicon to um, do tomorrow and you're, it's assigned to you kind of thing, um, which is really nice. And then as you can see, because this is our install, um, you can see that we've actually got, you know, quite a number of projects in here right now um, as far as our, our workspaces go. And you can actually filter those out um, so that, you know, you only see, you know, whichever one. So it makes it kind of nice because, um, you know, if you've got, you know, a hundred projects in here or something like that, then it's nice to uh, be able to filter that out. And I'm going to click on my dashboard real quick. I don't know what's in here. It should be safe, but... Um, if you are in your dashboard, this is like your working view, right? Um, you can actually see what tasks you've got assigned um, for today, um, what is due soon, what is due in the far future, and then stuff that doesn't have any kind of due date, um, which is really nice. And then on the left-hand side, you see a running, tab, uh, running uh, tab of all the items that are um, that are being done in the system. So, you know... Uh, all the things that have been completed over the last, you know, say 24 hours, and you can actually clear this stuff out too. So if you uh, want to start the day fresh with a, a, you know, inbox zero, if you will, um, then you can. Um, so anyway, that's uh, that is pretty much my demo. Do you want to take back uh, presenter, and then uh, we'll show the last slide, and then uh, we can do question and answers. So. What we found since switching to Redbooth over Active Collab is that um, most of our clients, like I want to say 80% of our clients are using Redbooth, which those of you that you know are in this industry know that that's like the, the magic elixir right there, right? I mean, if you can get your clients to actually use the project management app, um, then it cuts down all those on all those emails that you get during the day, and it keeps everything in kind of a, an organized place. Um, I can, you know, more easily see who's working on what, and um, I can plan, you know, people's workloads. Like, one of the worst things that you can do is just start piling up a bunch of stuff on people without the knowledge of um, what they what they have tasked, because then they start to feel overwhelmed, and, oh, my gosh, I've got all the stuff that I've got to do. I want to manage that as much as I can. So I want to make sure that um, their context switching isn't uh, too much as well, so if I can... I will um, I'll get a bunch of tasks from a specific client, and I'll make sure that um, that we schedule those for a specific day. Um, you know, and it makes it just a, lot, a little bit nicer for uh, for those of us that are working in uh, on these projects. Question and answer, Samantha. Great. Um, well, then I will go ahead and get started. I think you covered this for the most part, Marcus, but um, another question has come up. Do your uh, clients actually use Redbooth, or do you find it difficult to get them to adopt it? 
No, absolutely. I mean, like I said, you know, some 80% of our clients, um, you know, use Red Booth. We're actually really pleased because that that is um, very important to us. Uh, as I mentioned before, I mean, I was just getting, you know, probably about six or seven months ago, um, we made a concerted effort to um, get, you know, to make sure that Red Booth was the place where all that communication was happening. And um, we've been very successful in, uh, you know, and getting clients to adopt that. It's not, you know, it's not uh, difficult for them to understand. I mean, you've got these task lists, they can see, you know, what's going on. Um, the other nice thing is that the um, the iPhone and the iPad apps are pretty stellar. Um, and so, you know, they, they can just download their iPhone app, you know, or the app on their iPhone, and it makes it really easy for them to kind of keep track of, you know, what's going on with the project. Yeah, great. Um, thank you so much for that, Mark. It was, uh, Marcus, it was a great presentation.